Hey guys, no gym needed here. Coming to you for a quick solo leveling prediction and theory video. So, this is going to cover chapters 230 to 235. If anything should happen to me, please protect my mother and sister. Ah, I should have predicted that. But I was too focused on the hype for this big old war that's coming up. I forgot how real solo leveling is. That's so Gene Wu. He's a great main character. He's very human and always sticking to his ideals, just like when he was an E ranker. Still the same. Same guy. Now, it's even funnier. I. Sh <laughs> it's not like it's. Who cares? I didn't predict what Eugene Ho's dad could do. Whatever. But. The funny part about that is I definitely should have been able to predict it, and I'll show you why. Right before I made that video, I texted my buddy, and this is what I texted him. Check this out. So there's the screenshot, so you can see it's a screenshot, it was a message, and I said, the MC in solo leveling is so cool and smart, I love that guy, great MC. He was the weakest, but never once outwardly complained or acted out like Naruto. And he didn't have a dream or anything. He just wanted to pay his mom's medical bills and take care of his sister. So, you see that? I should have been able to predict it. I literally basically said it. Oh well. So let's move on to some more predictions here. And I got a few. I got a few. Now, Bellion is showing a lot more personality. Like, he's really quickly developing as a character. He even put this black flag on top of the castle that Baru made in the ants. That was funny. Um, so, the marshals took over the armies, you know, where the sovereign died. Yeah, I, I already guessed that. I didn't actually verbally state it, but I think we all guessed that. And when I was brainstorming that, I kind of was thinking, well, they would just fight to become the next sovereign. But then I quickly realized it doesn't work like that. The Sovereigns are like a separate existence, born from darkness. That's why I did all that super deep speculating at the end of my last video. They are literally so much different than their underlings. Um, that's why it's so significant uh, that a lot of them have died now. I don't think any of them have ever died before. Now four of them are dead. And I really am curious as to see where they got their beginnings. Uh, let's see what's now it mentioned that besides the shadow sovereign all the other sovereigns kept increasing their armor their armies continuously how uh, is it through sexual intercourse and raising children that can't be right but Osborne talked about a hermaphroditic race that wizard the greatest wizard was from a hermaphroditic race but he said it as if it's a rare thing so I guess they actually did it through mating, more or less. Maybe Chaos World Denizen children grow up very, very quickly, though, compared to humans. Okay, so... <laughs> 10 million versus 130,000. That's what they're trying to say. They're speculating that the armies of the Sovereigns are going to come out to 10 million. Well, um, we got the rulers as well. But the rulers are being quiet. But we know they're watching. Jin Wu's dad was told to protect him. So they're going to come to help. And they're keeping track of what's going on to an extent. So they're going to come at the right time. Or maybe they're coming as fast as they can. But they just can't get here quickly enough. They were saying the sovereigns were coming at a very fast pace. Um, yeah, so Kamish came out in America. We know that. He was probably an ancient gray dragon. The biggest of the eight gates is over Canada. Let's assume that belongs to the Lord of Destruction, the Dragon Sovereign. Going by that logic, the King of the Giants was in a gate in Japan. Now this would make sense, because I was wondering why would the rulers put a gate in the crippled Japan if they're trying to protect and maintain humanity? What if they can just spawn S-Gates, but only in a general vicinity? And what if certain realms parallel certain places on Earth? We still don't know how the, the mining between dimensions works, but 
you see what I'm saying here? So, the King of Giants came out in Japan. Therefore, I'm assuming the gate over China is going to be the Giants. And because Kamish came out in America and the biggest gate is over there, I'm guessing that would be the Dragon Sovereign. Now, the uh, Beast Army is probably in Brazil. And is it a stretch to guess the Ice Elves will be somewhere snowy? The Sovereign of Frost's army? So I went back and looked um, at the Hunters Conference, the International Hunters Conference, to see what the eight countries were that had these massive gates over it. No, nine countries, my bad. And after all that reading and finding exactly what chapter it was and all that, you know what I found? They only showed us two countries where the Magisphere was over. Alberta, Canada and Seoul, Korea. What the heck? Why? So we're gonna have to guess. I'm guessing right now. China is Giants, Seoul was the Shadow Soldiers, and Brazil is the Beast, while Canada is the King of Dragons. Uh, the rest would just be speculation, 100%. Germany, the White Flame. Africa, the Insect Army. Iceland or Greenland, the Sovereign of Frost. Australia, I don't think any monsters are coming from Australia, because then they'd have to cross an ocean. And that's just too difficult and stupid. What, are they going to come out of a gate just to make more gates to cross over to the mainland? Are they going to swim like the, the giant? Nah. Dragons can fly though, but I still think they're coming out in America. Now, if it was Jean Wu versus a sovereignless army, he will wreck them. End of story. The only potentially harmful army I could think of would be the Giants, because uh, they're pretty strong. And if they had a bunch of elite martial grades, then that could pose a threat to Jin Wu's army. But once he starts killing them, and then, you know, he gets a couple in his shadow army, oh, man, it's done. And if he defeats a whole army, and he, has, he could put them all into his army, oh. All right, so let's see. Let's uh, speculate where this is going. Reading from chapter 230 to now, I've been so hyped. They put so much hype around this war. And I remember from chapter 219 to 220, I had to make one video because there was so much information. And I'm like, we're coming down to the wire. This is end game. We were getting so much information. So I'm waiting for it to come. And the last five chapters have been like nothing. Pure slice of life. And I'm just, I'm always on edge. I'm like, this chapter, it's gonna say, all the stuff we've been wondering about and then nothing. So it's I think it's a calm before the storm. Normally at the end of a show it picks up the pace like crazy, sometimes way too fast, but this show slowed it down so much to like a creepy crawl. I'm actually kind of getting a little scared because we have so many questions as you guys know very well and yet there's only like 20 chapters left. But solo leveling has not let me down yet, so I'm going to trust in it. Now, I predict it's Jin Wu and uh, Lui Zong, or whatever, however you say his name, versus the giant army in China first. If every gate opened in succession, that'd be great. But if Jin Wu wasn't there, any one sovereign could destroy most of the planet in less than seven days. And if the rulers came, or if the rulers come, they'd be wiped clean. So think about this for a sec. Let's imagine each gate opens in succession. So the gate over China opens up and then another one forms and it's gonna take seven days to open. Well, depending on what sovereign army comes out of that gate in China, if Jin Wu wasn't in the story and he's already a, a wild card, a variable, if he wasn't there, that, that army of, especially if it's led by a sovereign, could destroy the whole planet in seven days. That's really not even an issue. So it, all the other sovereigns wouldn't have anything to destroy when they got there. So I think they're going to start opening up simultaneously and there's going to be multiple gate breaks at the same time. That's the only way that I can make sense of this. So I have no doubt about that. Now the dragon army needs greater numbers to beat Jin Wu on a one in, with a one on one battle. Hands down, Jin Wu's army beats the dragons, but the dragons have the air advantage. So 
If you can get them on the ground, Jin Wu wins, always. But if those dragons stay in the air and attack from the air, it would be really hard for Jin Wu to put a dent in that. So he needs to get them to the ground somehow. So now since we don't have too much information on that, we can only just take a guess at how it's going to unfold. But I want to talk about the red gates quick. The red gates were very similar to instant dungeons. They're like portals. It's a gate, but it's a portal to a place rather than a dungeon. Instant dungeons are weird though. Were they fake? Was it a landscape made of images of the past? And the beasts that were in there, were they even real? It was literally the Shadow Sovereign, I'm guessing. It was literally the Shadow Sovereign manifesting a world. The monsters were not real, per se, but the reason he could level up in the instant dungeon was because it was all made for mana. We saw how the Shadow Sovereign does his thing. He has like this, he can basically manifest things with mana. And that's why he felt magic energy in them. That is Jin Wu when he went in there. It was like a vision, but with life pumped into it. As for the location, I guess the wizard just checked the city and thought, okay, I can turn this building into this, or I can turn this entrance of this subway into this. <laughs> And so he picked the locations based on that, and that's why he had to go to a specific spot. I'm wondering if a red gate was like a jail cell for a VIP or something. A red gate is a portal to a place where the captured denizens of the Sovereigns basically have more room to roam around. I don't think dungeon breaks are even possible there. And maybe? It could be this though. Maybe you're actually teleported to a sovereign's domain somewhere in the chaos world. But it's a little hard to distinguish between that and the so-called crack between dimensions. Sovereigns, so sovereigns are in the crack looking for a way out and looking for a new spot to go destroy. Now while they're there, um, they have a domain, you know, they came from somewhere in the chaos world. Well, I'm assuming that there's some remaining denizens there and they they stay there and they do lookout and stuff and even if the rulers conquered them in the place that they had as their headquarters the rulers didn't just stay there they left so after the sovereigns and their armies fleed and the sovereign stayed in the crack between dimensions and it sent some of its people back to that spot maybe and that's where these instant dungeons or that's where these um, red gates are taking them I really don't know the red gates are very mysterious and I really want answers on those. Now, the black gate that appeared in the school, we still haven't got any answers about that. It was so random. And I am of the train of thought that it was one of the sovereigns. It might be that blonde haired guy, it might be a different one, it might be the sovereign of the white flame. I don't know who, who has orcs under their... Uh, tender love and care now. <laughs> I don't know who controls orcs, but I think one of the sovereigns made that little black gate and let the orcs come out. But the orcs came out in the order of like a dungeon. There was a boss, there was underlings and stuff. However, so it's like it seems like a dungeon that the rulers made, but the gate was so different and compared to regular gates. It was just that little black one, which is signif signifying, or it's like, that's one of the telltale signs of a sovereign. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. That's my prediction. I think a sovereign made that to mess with Jin Wu. Because that was, I originally we thought it was the system, but now we know it wasn't the system. And not only that, the dual dungeon manifested, appeared right in the field of the school, of Gina's school. So they had no gates anywhere near that school for a long time and then boom. Same week. Same one week you have a gate, orcs come out and kill everyone besides seventeen survivors. The week after that, a C rank dungeon with a dual dungeon in it. In the same school. Something's up with that. I'm not sure exactly what though. It seems a little sus uh, suspect. I can't see any connections there except for the fact that two gates opened up in the school 
within two weeks of each other. One of them was extremely unique, very rare situation with the orcs coming out of the little black gate. And then the other one as well, very rare situation, a dual dungeon. So that's the only connection I can find between them, but other than that, I can't find any connections. And what is a dual dungeon? They said other dual dungeons have appeared before the very first one that Gene Wu went in. So what were the purpose of those? I can see the purpose of the ones that Gene Wu went into. The Shadow Sovereign did it. Let's say the Shadow Sovereign was observing the rulers and what they were doing and the rulers had all these dungeons that they were going to send to Earth and there was A ranks and they were getting an S rank ready and there was B ranks and then there's the C rank and D ranks and stuff and they don't really care about them too much they just throw those little little things little uh, chaos denizens I was trying to think of a very weak race but they just throw those little chaos denizens in there and they just send it off to Earth if it's a C rank and below they just probably don't even pay too much mind to it and so the Shadow Sovereign was very very easily could just hook on to that hook on that dual dungeon there and then teleport the angel statue in there and then the rulers wouldn't even know and when it got to earth there was a dual dungeon so I could see how that would happen but why did he attach it to one that was right next to Gene Oz school and he had the key and it said you have to wait this long and so he knew it was gonna did he have that key before the attack on her school if he got that key before that and that key knew it was gonna manifest at her school and the orc attack happened in between that hmm, that's kind of sketchy so yeah I don't know what the purpose of dual dungeons is or how dual dungeons work before this one they said they're extremely rare so I'm guessing the other do all I'm guessing all the other dual dungeons were for the Shadow Sovereign to get get um, a protege. They did say that he had tried a bunch of times before, but the people died. They couldn't handle it. So now that I think about it, yeah, I think all those dual dungeons were literally from the Shadow Lord doing this plan to try to get people. That makes sense. That makes sense. But still, if he had that key to go back into the dual dungeon and it had the time limit on there and it was going to manifest at Gina's school and if he had that key before the orc gate coming out at her school that's a little sketchy but I know the shadow sovereign wouldn't try to kill uh, Jinwoo's sister I still feel like it was another sovereign who did that just to mess with just to mess with uh, Song Jinwoo okay so how is it going to work when they start coming out of these gates the gate is going to open up over China, and then just very quickly after, other gates are going to have to completely manifest, and I feel like they're going to open up way faster than the seven-day time limit. You know, I think I think the giants are going to come out of the one in China, and then they're going to start fighting. And once they start fighting, the dead giants are going to, you know, there's going to be so many giants dying that so much magic energy is going to get released into the Earth's atmosphere and then that's going to that's going to be the catalyst for all the other magisphere gates to open up a lot faster so when there's hunters dying and when there's giants dying and I know Jin Wu's going to say don't fight just fight when you have to stay behind me let me and my army fight and you can back me up whenever you see fit he's not going to let them all just charge in on the front lines to their death but when hunters die and when giants die coming out of the China gate, it's going to be so much magic energy injected into the earth that the other um, gates can open up quicker. Assuming that all the other sovereigns' armies are ready, which I think they are. Uh, yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. And then once so many gates open up at the same time and all these armies are coming and it looks like they're going to head toward Jin Wu and he's going to be totally circled uh he's gonna be totally trapped between you know in the middle of all these sovereign armies the rulers are gonna come the rulers are gonna sweep in there and it's gonna be epic and i think when that happens then the sovereign's armies is gonna back down then the rulers are gonna back down 
and it's just going to be a fist fight between Jean Wu and the King of Berserk Dragons. They're just going to have an all-out brawl to see who's superior. That's going to be nuts, and I don't know if that's what's going to happen or not, but it's the best I can do with the information we have right now. So I can't wait to see what happens. There's been nothing, no action going on in like the last five chapters. I know it's going to come. And when it does, well, I'll probably have to make another video. <laughs> I wasn't even planning on making this video that long, but there is still stuff that we're, we got to speculate on. We've had so many answers to our questions, and once we're all done with the series, I'm going to make tons of videos. I'm going to make a video like, what is the Red Gate? Hopefully we have all the information on it. You know, what is the system? And then I'm going to make a video specifically just answering the questions we had asked and yeah, that's gonna be good. So, uh, what about, yeah, the generals are gonna fight too. There should be uh, at least five. There's at least four remaining generals. Yeah, the Shadow Sovereign was the fifth general of the rulers, as far as I know. So there should be four brilliant fragments of the rulers. I think they're gonna come and get their powers back from the remaining uh, people borrowing the ruler's powers and once they're fully powered up they're gonna fight the four remaining shadow so uh, shadow sovereigns the four remaining sovereigns are gonna fight the four remaining fragments of the most brilliant light and let me see if that includes uh, let me yeah so there's only four sovereigns left not including Jin Wu and then we saw four generals in the system playback of the rulers so I'm thinking that the, sh the Dragon Sovereign is going to kill the most brilliant fragment, Ruler General. The one who started the rebellion, he's going to die. He's going to give a speech and say this is what I get for my sin, you know. I've already said this. And then Jean Wu is going to step in to fight the Lord of Destruction. And then the other three generals, generals of the rulers are gonna destroy the other three sovereigns and then after that is where the speculation is gonna get a lot deeper we're gonna get the origins of all the shadow uh, the shadows the origins of all the sovereigns and the rulers and I've already speculated that on that as best as I can so that's it for today let me give some final thoughts here yeah what's great about solo leveling is a lot of our predictions we were on the right track like here's a note I have from way back when, chapter 164 to 175. The angel statue was lied to by someone. It was a sympathizer with the Shadow Lord, but not Jean Wu. So we had that right, but it was the Shadow Lord himself who lied to it. I just thought of a way for how Jean Wu can get them out of the air. So he's going to see that problem, obviously, he's going to realize he got to get them out of the air. Jean Wu is going to use his... Uh, little transportation gate and he's gonna transport on top of a dragon and just cut its head off and then he's gonna call out his shadow army he's gonna have them return and then he's gonna call them back out from on top of a dragon and they're all gonna just pop out of his shadow and land on the backs of all these dragons in the air and then start slaying them and cutting their heads off and stuff and the dragons are just gonna fall to the ground dead and of course the ancient great dragons are not going to be happy about that and they're going to go crazy and take the battle to the ground and be like all right we don't need to be in the air we're strong enough we'll take you on the ground just picture that Wu, Wu what's that guy's name Wu Chol or whatever the association president there are going to be like sweating buckets and then all of a sudden Jean was going to disappear you're just going to see the dragons getting ready to dominate everything and then right as a dragon opens its mouth, you see the light start accumulating in its mouth. And right before it shoots it down onto the association president who is making peace with his own inevitable death, it doesn't come. He opens his eyes, the head of the dragon just falls on the ground right in front of him. And Jean Wu is up there. And his shadow army pops out of his shadow. Oh, and they all land on the backs of the dragons. That would be nuts! And then the dragons are like, oh, we thought we had the advantage in the air, but, you know, this is the Shadow Lord. The, he was the greatest warrior in all the heavens. 
We should have expected as much. We'll take it to the ground. The dragons go to the ground, and then Jin Wu instantly has his army go into those perfect three separate groups that he made, and then everyone, the dragons are even like, whoa, this guy is so prepared. This guy is ready for war. And then all the atmosphere is going to change, and the shadow... So why do I always say the shadow? Then the sovereign of Berserk Dragons is going to come out to the front and reveal himself and raise the morale of his dragons. Then all the other sovereign's armies will come and it'll look like Jin Wu's surrounded. And then the rulers will come and then it'll just be Jin Wu and the dragon lord duking it out. Because if Jin Wu dies, humanity's going with him and the rulers, well, who knows, they're a wild card, but if Jin Wu wins, then the rulers and everyone's going to be super pumped to go kill all the so or the remaining sovereigns, if there are any, because I think, you know, the Lord of Destruction is going to kill the greatest fragment who started the rebellion, and then the other generals will kill the other sovereigns. But maybe a sovereign will be the general, not just the Lord of Destruction. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. All right, guys. This is my prediction of the end game. Let me hear your prediction in the comments below. I'm no Jim Needed, and I'll see you next time.